Dear friends, in this video I will present to you an RFID access zone. This access zone consists of an RFID reader combined with a PIC microcontroller. The reader uses the Wigand protocol for the communication with the PIC. More info about this protocol can be found in the reference tab next to the Worklog tab on pcbheaven.com site. Here's how the circuit works. Once you power the circuit, a delay takes place, giving time to the reader to properly initialize. After this period of time, the reader is ready to read RFID cards. You can now observe that the first LED flashes twice in a second, which means that the system is in normal state. So, when you approach a card then accordingly, if the card is registered to the EPROM memory of the PIC, the PIC arms the electronic strike for a small period of time, giving you access to the zone that you want to enter. Also, lights on-off the third LED. Now, if the PIC doesn't have the card registered to the EPROM memory, then you don't see any activity on the electronic strike, but you can see the fourth LED flashing on off, which means that the card is not registered to the system. Nor the third. Nor the fourth. Nor the fifth. Now, let's see how you can register or cancel cards to the system. I have used only one button for these functions which makes it very simple to operate. So, when you want to register a card, then the only thing that you'll have to do is to press the button and then approach the card to the reader. You will see that the second LED flashes once and then the circuits returns to normal activity. This means that by the time the LED turned on and off, the card was registered to the system. As you see, the second card is now registered to the system and can give you access. Also, the third card is not registered to the system as well. So you can simply redo the writing sequence in order to have the third card registered to the system. The program that I have uploaded to the site can store five cards. You can modify the program if your needs exceed this amount. Now, when you have filled the EEPROM with the five cards and you want to add another one, the system shows you that the EEPROM memory is full, lighting all the LEDs twice on and off. Holding the button for about 10 seconds, you are entering the delete mode where you can delete the whole EEPROM. In a few days, I will add to my program the functionality to select the position that you want to erase and also a more complex way of reading the cards with the timing period of each pulse that the reader produces when reads a card. So when a pulse does not have the same duration that it was supposed to, then the program will understand that something has gone wrong as a result to abort the reading or writing operation and wait for another read. I will give further info for the particular update when I will upload my new firmware version. Thank you for watching this video, hope you like it and build one for your own. Also don't forget to visit pcbheaven.com for more interesting circuits and projects.